Every government has its Secret Service branch. America, it's CIA. France, Desiem Bureau. England, MI5. NATO also has its own. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Hartenden Open Prison, a product of our enlightened times, was a prison without bars. The man I wanted to see there was a prisoner called Michael Leoman. Now, he was an Irish-American who, seven years before, had been found guilty of a violent bomb outrage in South London. True, his actions were motivated by deeply felt political beliefs, but that could not excuse the violence of the crime. Now his prison term was up. In 24 hours, he'd be a free man again. Only his return to the outside world was not going to be the simple step he thought. I stood in his way. Morning. Hello. Will the governor be a friend of yours? Well, not exactly. I just happened to get a lift in his car. My name is Drake, John Drake. Uh, well, I guess you know who I am. Yes, I do indeed. They tell me that uh, you've been here longer than anyone else. Yeah, nearly five years. You might say Tim Brannigan and myself were the original guinea pigs. We were at Dartmoor before that. Tim Brannigan? Yeah, fellow rebel. Finished his time a couple of years ago. They weren't sure of the place at work until they tried it on us. <laughs> does it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sure it does. I see, it uh, doesn't bother you to talk about it. Hmm. No, it might have done once, but not now. You can do a lot of thinking in seven years. It took a long time getting through to me, but now I know. No doubts about it? No. Well, the slate's clean. I, uh, I hear you're going to work in Scotland. Yeah, the Western Highlands. An Irish-American working for the Scottish lair. Well, that's quite a combination, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Might I be permitted to ask who you are? Yes, of course. Well, among other things, I'm, uh, I'm an Irish-American. That's one reason why they sent me. Well, if it's bad news, let's have it. If I were you, Mr. Learman, I'd forget about that job. Forget it? Do you think jobs like that are bedded out like these young shoots? Yeah, look, I hooked that job myself. Sure the job didn't hook you? Come again? If I understand it, Mr. Learman, the government gave you permission to advertise for a post in forestry. Is that correct? Yeah, for well, which I'm now qualified. Now, you've got only one reply from a Mr. Robert Crawford, who lives in the western highlands of Scotland. Oh, well, if so... you take that job with Crawford, I think you'll find yourself, sooner than you think, back in the same situation that got you in here in the first place. You've got something on Crawford, then? Yes, yeah, something, but not enough. Now, I want to go to Crawford's in your place, with your name and background, past and present. And the only way I can put on a convincing show is to know everything about you, and the only one who can tell me is you. Where does that leave me? Oh, we'll pay for the privilege. Pay me? Yes, yeah, not in money. Another job. One that's really worthwhile. How about it? Well, something tells me I'd be a fool to take any chances. I'll go along with you. You will? Mm. I'm obliged, Mr. Learman. Next morning, I was aboard the Flying Scotsman, racing across the Firth of Forth. By the afternoon, I was ambling westwards on a local train. and how are the children? Oh, they're fine. Good. Is my car here yet? No, not yet. Excuse me, would you... Uh, are you Mrs. Crawford of Loch Doon? Oh, why, yes. Oh, I'm Leoman. Oh, how do you do? 
your new forestry man. How nice. Didn't your husband tell you about me? <laughs> I've been away. I migrate in the winter. I only wish I could persuade my husband to do the same. Oh, I see. Well, uh, are you sure you haven't made a mistake? Well, I certainly hope not, not after coming all this way. Your husband assured me it was going to be a permanent... I'm sure he did, Mr. Learmond. What I mean is a mistake in taking the job. I suppose you know that Loch Doon is at the end of the world. You might as well be living on a rock in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, you can't discourage me, Mrs. Crawford. I, I like solitude. You surprise me. Well, where was your last job? In prison. Oh, oh well, um, that must account for it then. But you haven't got that look. What look? In the eyes. My father had it. Was he in prison? Yes, prisoner of war. Good evening, Mrs. Crawford. Ah, oh, Anders at last. Come along, Mr. Lane. Thank you very much. I must apologize for my husband. When did you last see Mr. Crawford, Neil? At six o'clock this morning, madam, when he left for Rannoch Point. Oh. I'm thinking of suing for divorce, Mr. Lermont, naming Rannoch Point as correspondent. Oh, and how did a headland come to steal your husband's affections, Mrs. Crawford? How, you might well ask. It's a bird sanctuary. Stole my father from me, too. Days I was made to spend up to my waist in a marsh, trailing after him, capturing enthralling pictures of the mating display of the crested grebe. But I won in the end. I caught pneumonia in an east wind. Touching and pathetic picture. I thought I'd finished with the place, but how cruelly my husband deceived me. When I first met him in Dublin, he was such a nice, comforting man. He didn't know an owl from an oyster catcher, and then one summer I brought him up here. He came home very late one evening. I found a most wonderful place, he said. Rannoch Point. The birds, they're marvelous. Are you a bird watcher, Mr. Lemond? No, I haven't had many opportunities in the last seven years, Mrs. Crawford. Well, then stay away from Rannoch Point. If I ever see it again, it'll be too soon for me. Evening, Neil. Mr. Dillon, show up? Oh, yes, sir. He showed up. We kept your dinner on the hut. Oh, don't bother. I'll help myself. Kathy, it's great to have you home again. Robert. I'm sorry I didn't get to the station. That would be too much to expect. <laughs> oh, Robert, this is Mr. Learman. How do you do, Mr. Crawford? How do you do? There are a pair of white-tailed sea eagles nesting on the bluff. They're the first in this part of the world for 50 years. The eggs were hatching. I couldn't leave the hide, but we got some great pictures. I'll be fascinated to see them. I think I'll be running along now. If Neil could show me to the cottage, what time would you like to see me in the morning, oh, Mr. Crawford? You'll do nothing of the kind. Your first night out of prison, sleeping in a damn cottage all by yourself. You're staying here. You're very kind, Mrs. Crawford. Well, I've had a long day. I'm off to bed. Now, don't be late. Good night, Mr. Lehman. Good night, Mrs. Crawford. Mind pouring me a drink, Lehman? And now tell me about yourself. Oh, I thought we covered all that in our correspondence. When you've been around as much as I have, you find you can't put too much trust in the written word. Action. There's truth in action. When a man hits you in the teeth with his bare fist, you know you've been hit. You know where I've been, Mr. Crawford. I've been in prison studying forestry. Clever people, the English. Well, what meaning what? Teach a man a trade, but while you train him, let him know who's master. If he does any thinking, make sure it's the right kind. Did you do any thinking in there? Quite a bit. Your kind are theirs. Look, Mr. Crawford, seven years ago I killed a man. That's why I was inside. But now I'm out. The slate's clean. What I think and how I think is my business and nobody else's. I'm surprised you can take it lying down. Disgusted might be a better word. You're trying to provoke me, Mr. Crawford. Since when could anyone provoke a tame mick? Something the English have let out because they've removed the sting, because it's harmless. Yes, disgusted is the word right enough. I thought the Irish had guts. But I was wrong. The English can break anyone in time. At any time you want to put that to the test, Mr. Crawford. Against two in particular? You name it. Against them, perhaps? Look, I said you name it. I took everything they handed out for seven years because I had no option. But not even a tame mick. Crosses off seven years of his life without making one promise to himself, if you know what I'm talking about. You've made your point. Let me make it even clearer, Mr. Crawford. 
The first chance I get, I'm putting one man under for every month I spent in the I place. said you've made your point. Relax, Lehman. You're among friends now, better than you know. What do you mean? Pour us both a large whiskey. We've got something to celebrate. Huh. Maybe you have. I said we. We found Tim Brannigan. Your old pal from Hartenden. Brannigan? The old team, Liam. You and Brannigan. He's expected here tomorrow. Quite a surprise, isn't it? But then that's the way I do things. Oh, that's great. That's just great. You couldn't have given me a bigger surprise. String to it. Michael Liam and Pat Mullins. How do you do? The Michael Liam. Well, this is a rare pleasure. Have you sighted the trawler yet? Ah, oh, yes, she's on her way in. No more than two miles offshore now. Good. We're going to show you some great sights this morning, Liam. Let's go. Crawford's hated rival. The fence was strong and high. The wire was new. Excessive security for protecting the privacy of seabirds, what did it hide? I'd know soon enough now. What do you see out there? It's over the horizon. It's my home where I was born. Don't go. Well, you'll be across there before long. Who's aboard the trawler? The boys? I'm hoping Brannigan will be with them. Old Tim? That's great. I feel like old times. Come on. during the war. They train special men here, sabotage units. What's good enough for them is good enough for us. Now then, isn't that a rare and beautiful sight? Oh boy, oh boy. Sheer poetry. And there's so much of it too. Must have cost a fortune. I married a very rich woman, Liam. She know about this? Not on your life. And as luck would have it, she's not interested in managing her money, just spending it. So I look after the family fortune. A uh, very nice job you're making of it too, Robert, my lad. And the, uh, the Ulster bank raid last week. No, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? <laughs> and the raid in the car at the weekend? Yes. Uh, I'm in good company, aren't I? The police are searching the whole of Ireland for the boys. And here they are, safe to eat and sleep their heads off. And find the next operation. There'll be a show by now. Come on. Was Brannigan with them? How oh, I hope not. I was supposed to be his oldest friend. Ahoy there, Mullins. Is Brannigan there? Aye. Well, then bring him over here. Tell him an old friend wants to meet him. This is quite a day. They say he's a great lad. Uh, the best. Come on inside. This calls for something to celebrate. All right? Uh, all right. Tim Brannigan, though. Captain Crawford. This is a pleasure. It is indeed. And who have we here, you old pal? You're not Tim Brannigan. 
What's going on here? Who are you? I'm Tim Brannigan, right enough. Let's have a look inside here. It might tell us who you really are. Mullins, the door! I'm Tim Brannigan, I tell you. And if you don't believe me, ask the boys in the boat who I am. They know me. But who's this one? That's what I like. <laughs> Mrs. Crawford. Would you give me a hand with these, please? Yes, of course. We're Mr. just in time for lunch. Crawford, be back soon. Mr. Learman is coming to lunch. Oh, that's fine. I didn't want him running off just yet. <laughs> running off? Where on earth would he go running to, poor man? I do hope you like the cottage. Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Mr. Crawford took me down to Rannock Point. Oh, have you enslaved to Rannock Point now? I find it uh, quite fascinating. There. Well, why don't you help yourself for a drink, Mr. Learmond? I won't be a minute. Thank you very much. I walk straight out to the car. Shall we go? Oh, you're not going out now. Come along, lunch is ready. I just want to show Liam and something. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Crawford. It can wait. Shall we eat? That sea air is giving me an appetite. <laughs> what is it? Sugar, sir? You're both very silent. I'm sorry, Mrs. Crawford. I'm afraid that uh, your husband has given me a good deal to think about. Oh, you don't want to pay too much attention to him. I'm afraid he has some very wild notions. Well, wilder than you think, Mrs. Crawford. Now you worry me. Well, we were uh, we were pretending that Rannoch Point was being used by the Irish rebels. Children. And that the IRA commanders were using it as a base and making their sallies into Northern Ireland by sea. How thrilling. And that's when I come along. 
And what are you in this little drama, Mr. Learman? Oh, that's my secret, you see. I, I take the place of the new forestry man. The man that your husband knew only by reputation. There's not much I could do about that. You could try to kill me. Oh, surely you credit me with a little more intelligence. I'm afraid I don't. I couldn't risk killing you without knowing some more about you. But desperate men do stupid things. I've had enough of this idiotic game. Now, please, let's talk about something else. Of course, Cathy. It's not a game. I don't believe Would you. Would you like to put it to the test? You walk out with me now to the car and drive me to the station. Are you serious? I was never more serious in my life. All right, Mr. Learmont. Come on. This is a game. I think it's a very ill-mannered one. But I'll drive you wherever you want to go. It's a game between the two of us. I'm coming too. I thought you might. After you, Mrs. Crawford. strangest ride had ever taken, but it had its own macabre aspect. I was on my way to put a rope around Crawford's neck, and he was helping me to do it. There was a catch somewhere. There had to be. You're satisfied. Thank you, Mrs. Crawford. You saved my life. Now, shall we all go home again? Kathy, you don't understand. Leamond is really taking the train. That's the idea, isn't it, Leamond? That's right. Now, look here, Leamond. Aren't you making a mistake rushing off like this? Remember, you've been in jail a long time. You're not yet adjusted. You can drop the act now, Mr. Crawford. Kathy. I noticed the tank was a little low. Fill it up with gas, will you? But I don't like to leave you. Do as I tell you. Is that the up train? Uh, no, Mr. Crawford. That would be the express. Thank you. Sense Crawford to come back to London with me now. Why should I do that? Because they'll come to the same thing in the end. It was 
was a somewhat ironical leave-taking. There was a smile on her lips, but not in her eyes.